So in today's uh, Tip Thursday with me, Connor Klein, we're going to be going into citizenship by marriage in Russia, Ukraine, Moldova, and Belarus. Bye, Echo. Привет из Одессы, мама. Greetings from Odessa in Ukraine. Now, in the past, this used to be the center of, I guess, what is kind of derogatory referred to as the mail order bride industry of Eastern Europe. So basically, the idea was that these Western white knights would ride in here along the boulevards and just on Primorsky Boulevard in the center of Odessa and rescue some impoverished, <laughs> desperate Ukrainian girl and whisk her back to the West where his biggest issue might be that she'll turn out to be a green card girl and actually just be interested in getting the hell out of here and marrying him as a way to get to the West and a better life, right? So that has always been the stereotype. But boy, have times changed because now you see more and more Western guys doing basically what I have done and uh, moving to Eastern Europe and they come here for several reasons one is cost of living is a hell of a lot more attractive here than it is in most of the West the dating options there are just a lot more higher value dating options for Western guys here than in general back home and also especially this being 2021 and having gone through you know the last almost 18 months of this COVID mess there's definitely a soft feeling of more freedom here in Eastern Europe than what we've seen in the West. So with more and more guys coming here, obviously if you come as a single guy, you are obviously open to meeting someone, whether it happens to be here in Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, Moldova, or somewhere else in Eastern Europe. And the big question becomes, well, if you are going to decide to get married or you've met someone, well, maybe you in fact are the one who's kind of the green card guy. <laughs> So let's start with Ukraine. Now, in order to get Ukrainian citizenship by marriage, you need to be married for just two years and reside with your spouse here in Ukraine in order to qualify for citizenship. Pretty quick, I think, by global standards. And the downside, maybe, for a lot of guys is the fact that at the moment, Ukraine does not recognize dual nationality. Now, of course, there was, there is still this Ukrainian oligarch, Ihor Kolomorsky, and he once famously equipped when he was challenged about him allegedly having more than one passport, that just dual nationality is not legal, but triple nationality is fine. Uh, but for those of you who don't want to give up your passport, obviously that's a bit of an issue. If you do have a Ukrainian passport, how easy is it to travel? Actually surprisingly good considering the region and the history of, you know, passports in this region has not been the best, but Ukraine ranks pretty well. It's actually ranked 39 out of 116 on the ranking I looked at. And you can go to 137 countries visa-free. So it's not a disaster. That said, you will need a visa to go to United States, to go to Canada currently, to go to United Kingdom, to go to Ireland, my home country. Uh, but you don't need a visa to go to Schengen zone, which is most, which is most of the countries in the European Union. So not bad as a travel document definitely a lot better than it used to be so next up is moldova now you need to be married for three years and reside in moldova in order to get the passport so a year more than ukraine but they do allow dual nationality and in fact a huge number of moldovans actually hold romanian and or russian nationality as well because of that so you're not going to have an issue with the dual nationality now as a travel document it's not quite as good probably as you know the ukrainian one it was ranked 49th best passport in the world in that ranking i saw of 116 countries and you get 121 countries visa free now what's on that list obviously former soviet union actually all of these countries basically still allow visa free with the other former soviet union uh, countries and on top of that you get visa free to Schengen so 
like similar to Ukraine, uh, but you don't get it to North America. And there's actually a, a little bit trickier to go to some of the countries that are kind of big, maybe in Latin America, for example, or some of the other more maybe tourist destinations than the Ukrainian passport, but overall still not a terrible travel document uh, compared to, you know, obviously in a global level, some of the other countries. Now, Russia, what you get, what you need to do in order to get citizenship by marriage in Russia. Well, you need to be married for three years to a Russian citizen. Obviously, we're talking about they do allow dual nationality, but you will only be considered a Russian citizen by the Russian government. They'll just basically ignore the fact that you have another passport legally. As a travel document, it's kind of ranked just behind Moldova. You get to go to 119 countries visa-free but Schengen is not included in that. So most European Union will need a visa. Uh, you do get a, what Moldova doesn't have, which is a lot more of those holiday destinations. And uh, obviously you can't go to North America either without a visa. So still like Moldova, not a disaster, but not as attractive as having say the Ukrainian passport in terms of being able to travel with it. Now, the last country, Bella Belarus. So. Belarus is a bit harder. You need to be married and resident of Belarus for five years. So gonna take a bit longer unless you have a minor child. Uh, so child under 18, which would bring it down to three years residency. So that's actually a new law that came in to actually reduce it from seven. It actually have been seven previously in Belarus and actually about two months ago, the law got changed. It's gotten a little bit easier. Now, uh, do they allow dual nationality? Uh uh, not allowed dual nationality. So you will have to give up your other passport that you currently have, unless you're stateless <laughs> at the moment when you're watching this video. As a travel document, how is it? Well, it's definitely a lot less attractive than the other passports that I've mentioned. So on that ranking was ranked 73rd out of 116 countries, kind of midway in a global level. You have visa free to 77 countries. It is pretty straightforward to get a Schengen visa nowadays with a Belarusian passport. So maybe you do it once and you don't really have to worry about it again. You get visa free to the other Soviet republics, but you don't get visa free, obviously, to United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Ireland, Schengen, and a lot of countries basically, well, as you can gather all over the world, you need to get a visa. So harder to travel. Same time, you know, you get to go to the Emirates. Uh, I'm just thinking of other places I've met Belarusian girls have apparently been able to travel pretty easily, Turkey and whatnot. So it's not like you're going to be stuck in Belarus uh, because of needing visas if you want to go on holidays and stuff, but definitely a lot less attractive than the others. So something to consider if you become a Belarusian. So there's my enjoyable overview of the options of gaining citizenship by marriage in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Moldova. Now I dive into these options for gaining residency and eventually citizenship if that's what you want in my Slavic Utopia Secrets programs. They are for those countries. I'm going to put links down below in the description to this video so that you can uh, get in on that if you are considering relocating to one of those four countries. Um, also, you need to be on my free mailing list, of course, because that's when I notify you when there are new launches. I only open up exclusively to my most loyal fans on that mailing list. So down below, there's a link to the Tsar's hotspots here in Odessa, Mama, Olsen, Kiev, and Minsk, maybe in Belarus. So you get that completely for free, just down below in the description to the video. And, you know, this is one way to gain, obviously, citizenship. It's not normally what my clients want to do, and it should only be something you consider if you actually are in a serious relationship with someone from one of these four countries, of course. Uh, and there are plenty of other ways to, you know, if you just want to live here to do that without getting married. In fact, there are, especially for Ukraine, there's pretty straightforward ways to gain residency here. And not only do we go into those other residency options in my exclusive high level consultation groups, which are below those programs for each of the countries, but also go into things like the amazing real estate markets in Eastern Europe. Uh, we also look at what you need to do in terms of healthcare here, how you develop a network so you're not feeling no mates when you show up, what happens to be here in Ukraine, because you might have your spouse, 
but there's more in life than just having a spouse. You do need a circle of friends. Uh, on top of that, we're going to obviously go into how you can overcome the language barrier. I actually have a lot of experience with that because I learned previously over 10 languages and I obviously, as you can see from my vlogs here, I speak Russian and actually uh, some uh, Ukrainian, Romanian, and even Belarusian. So have the languages, the main languages obviously of the region covered, and I can help you with overcoming that language barrier, set up a plan for you. And you don't wanna miss out actually on creating a network here for the business opportunities because there are a lot of things that have been validated in the West that have not quite arrived here in Ukraine, and there are also interesting business options for you to invest in. So with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you in the next one. So, this Vidanya Dopobachna from Adessa Mama, which is kind of ironic when we're talking about marriage because all those green card girls, this is one of the main spots that they were marketed from, along with Mikolaev, which is just up along the coast here in the Black Sea, about three hours away. But yeah, don't fall for any of that. But, uh, all that fancy marketing about them all been desperately waiting for you to come and save them. You should be coming here yourself. Consider the move. Ciao, ciao. Sar Experience.